Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to decrease the player's health when you run out of a vital or a certain variable. So this could be, for example, your hunger, your oxygen, your thirst, anything like that. Just when a variable reaches zero, I will show you how to then decrease your health based on that. So let's get right into it. So what we're going to do for this is open up our third person character blueprint or just your player blueprint. So this could be third person, first person, or whatever you've named it. So I'll open that up straight away. And then here you can see I've already created this vital decrement function here, or decrease hunger in this example. So it's just a function here, which is just gonna decrease my hunger every single second by two. So obviously you won't wanna do it this quickly, and I've only set it for a value of six. So this is just to show you the example. And then I'm also printing this to the screen so we can see the value of hunger we have. So I'll close that function and we'll get into it. So we're going to create two variables. One is called health and we're going to change this to be an integer. And then we're going to create another variable and we're going to call this damage. And this is also going to be an integer. So the two new variables we have are health and damage, both being integers. And we can change these default values to whatever we want. We change the health to 30 just for testing. Obviously you might want to increase that a lot more for however you want it, but for testing that's good for me. The damage we're going to leave at zero. So you can compile that and then what we're going to do is just over on the functions over the left here we're going to hit plus function and we're going to call this one decrease health or deal damage or something like that just so you know what it is and then because it's in a function we can call this whenever we like. So it's decrease health so what we want to do is just simply get our health variable drag and drop that onto the executable to set our health like that and we're going to get our damage as well so drag that in and get and come off the damage and get a minus so an integer minus an integer plug the return value into the set health there and actually put the damage in the bottom one for the minus and put health in the top like so and that is all we need to do so what this is doing is when this function is going to be called it's going to decrease the health so we get our health minus the amount of damage from our health and set that to be our new health so that works perfectly and you can also play a sound here as well if you want so i'm going to do play sound i'll do play sound 2d as I wanted it to just play everywhere for the player. So play sound 2D, you can get whatever you like. Obviously you'll want an actual taking damage sound effect, but just for testing, I'm gonna use the camera shutter like so. So we compile and we can close that function there as that is that part done. Now what we want to do is if we want to take damage upon the hunger or something reaching zero, we obviously want to do this when our variable reaches zero. So our variable for hunger, oxygen, thirst, anything like that. So what you want to do is we want to open up our function or just wherever you have that code for decreasing that variable so obviously mine is the function decrease hunger and so it should probably look something like this for the one you have you should come in come into it you'd have a branch to see if that variable is less than or equal to zero or greater than or equal to zero see which way around you've done it and then your code here so if you don't have this branch i'd recommend putting it in as if you don't have it this rest of the code might not actually work anyway and also this just makes it a lot more efficient for us. So if you have less than or equal to, we're gonna come off of true. If you have greater than or equal to, you'll come off of false. But what we're gonna do is just come off of the true here and we're gonna set damage like so. So set damage and we're gonna set this to whatever we want. So I think for when the player is dying of starvation, I want the damage to be set at five. So every single time they lose damage, it's gonna decrease the health by five. And then we're gonna come out of this and just call our function. So we can come out and call function decrease health like so. And so now if you open this up, you can see that what it's gonna do is it's gonna get the damage that we just set to five and decrease that from the health. So what it's gonna do is if we don't have enough hunger, it's gonna set the damage to five and decrease that from our health. And so now for me, this is gonna do this every one second as that's the delay I have here, or every two seconds, sorry. So if you want this to take even longer than your hunger decreasing normally, you can obviously do that by just putting in a delay here. But obviously you can't do that in a function itself, so that way you would need to do this somewhere else by just doing the exact same thing. So getting a delay and then getting this branch and just doing this code here like so. So the code that is currently selected is what you would do outside. So like I say, I'll show you that. So you can just then do that, meaning you can get a delay to put that in there and come off of event tick like that. So it's just another way of doing it, but this way it's just slightly more efficient. So again, that is literally it. What we're doing is setting our damage and then decreasing the health based upon that damage. And the good efficient way of doing this way means that if you also have an attack system, then you can set the damage to something higher. So if you have an enemy, you can set the damage based upon that attack and then decrease the health. So it just means we can call this function 
wherever we like and we can then use this loads and in loads of different ways. So we can compile and save that and we should test to see if this is working. But actually one thing is I'm going to actually put another print string in here just so I can see what this looks like. So I'm going to do it the same way I did this. So I just put that in here, print string out of this. Obviously I'm just going to format it slightly differently. I'm not going to put the hunger variable in here. I'm going to put the health variable that we have like so and then just put that in there like that. So now we compile, save, we can test this. So you can see in the top left, the hunger is going down from six, four, two, zero. And now because of that, it's gone to zero, our hunger is going down, so it is decreasing, and you can hear the sound effect playing for as it is decreasing. Now it's not actually displaying the variable number because I haven't actually plugged that in like that, but now it will decrease our health perfectly like so. So we can just see it up in the top left screen and it will be decreasing our health when our hunger reaches zero. But you'll be able to notice something a little bit odd or something not what we want. So when this reaches zero, it's just gonna keep going down and nothing's gonna happen. So I'll show you what to do after that. So you can see it's reached zero and it's going into minus five. So I'll show you what to do for that now. So if we go back into our decrease health function here, what we're gonna do is just after this sound effect, so I'll just move this down a little bit like so. So we're going to come out of our play sound here, we're going to hold down B, left click and get a branch just to check to see what our health is. So if we get our health, so drag and drop get and then get a less than or equal to integer once again and keep that as zero and plug that in as the condition for this branch. What we're going to do is just check to see if our health is greater than or less than zero. And if it is obviously less than zero or equal to zero, the play is going to be dead. So we want to fire off that code as well. So what I'm going to do it's just quickly get a print string, call this one dead. And this is just as I have no other visual representation at the moment. Obviously you can put in an animation or something like that, like Ragdoll, which I also have a video on, which we linked on screen now in case you want to do that. So obviously if our health is less than or equal to zero, we're gonna come off of true, print string dead, and then we're also just gonna destroy the actor as well. So that way the player dies and everything works perfectly like so. And then we're also off of false, I'm just gonna do that print string like that. And so again, I have a video on Ragdoll, and I also have one on dying and respawning. So if you want to respawn your character afterwards, you can do that as well. Now if we compile and save, we can see that once again, our hunger is gonna be decreasing down to zero. And when it gets to zero, our player is gonna start taking damage. So it's gonna go from 30 to 25 to 20 as we set it to decrease by five each time. It is playing the sound effect, which is what we want to happen. And then when it reaches zero, the player is going to die like so. It said dead and our actor was destroyed as well. So now we can no longer play as the player is dead. And again, I have a video on respawning your character as well. But I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done everything we want to do. We've created it so that when our vital reaches a value of zero, our player's health will start decreasing like so. And we can set the damage so we can choose the amount of damage we want to deal for each different function, each different way of them taking damage. And then if their health reaches zero, they will die. But if it doesn't, then it will just happen again until their hunger or whatever gets above zero again. So again, I'll show you what that looks like now. But like I say, I think that'll be it for this video. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.